Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Dev Drawer. Today we're going to be continuing our fake store API e-commerce solution using JavaScript, HTML, and uh, CSS3. So in the last video, we created a account section that we can log in using um, the fake store API information um, using their dummy accounts, um, and you can also potentially update the account. But since we're not updating the account the API doesn't store it anyway I'm not going to show you how to do it but there you know it's pretty much the same process um, for any any of the actions on here you can always replicate what I've already done so this week we're going to be focusing on actually building out a usable shopping cart so right now it's just you know a blank page but we're going to be building it out so that it actually pulls from items from shopping cart for the person that's logged into it so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing I want to do is to create this cart.html page. So I'm just going to come over here and right click. We're going to create a new file and just call it cart.html. And I'm just going to copy over like the index page and then just get rid of the stuff that we don't need. Um, let's see, so let's copy this, paste it here. Um, I think that for the most part we can get rid of all of this stuff. So we should just now have a div for our container, the navigation, and the foot, uh, the footer, and then our JavaScript that's already included. So let's refresh this page. And go here. Okay. So this is what we're looking for. Um, the quickest way to get started with this, since we're already using Bootstrap, um, inside of Bootstrap Five, they have this example section. If we scroll down, I'm going to take, they have a checkout and this is kind of what I want to replicate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view the source on this, actually not view the source. I want to inspect the element and then I'm just going to copy over what I need from this. So let's see, I wanted to start here. So this is what I need. So I'm just going to copy this entire element and then I'm just going to paste it inside of our fluid container. And then over here, you can see now we kind of have a simplistic shopping cart. Um, again, this ties into Fake Stores API. If we scroll down to cart, we can get all the carts. And again, this API is not 100% set up the way that I would do it. It uses kind of generic information. And this generic information makes it a little bit difficult to tie things directly into um, a specific account because those accounts are not being stored with um, the IDs that you need and stuff like this. So what we're going to do is we can come in here and get results for a specific user. So we get user carts and this will pull back multiple carts. So if we look at this, we can see it has ID five, ID six, but the user ID is two. This one's two and then it has a list of products. So again, this could be something useful if you want to save cart statuses in the future, but for right now, it's kind of counterproductive for what we want it to do. We want it to be where when you log in, it pulls a previous cart that you've created and then displays that information. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just combine these two and we're gonna make it into a shopping cart experience where it actually you know, this will be updated with however many products is between both of those uh, shopping carts. And so with this one, then it'll list out the products here, as well as maybe display an image and stuff like that that's related to it. Um, okay, so let's first go into this uh, JSON that we need. So we need to get the user carts and this is what we need to pass to it. So let's go ahead and start creating that part. Let's create our JavaScripts that we need. So let's do new file, we're gonna do cart.js. And then inside of this cart, we're just going to create a class. We're gonna call it cart. And then uh, let's go ahead and just create a constructor class or a constructor method. And then inside of that, we're gonna do the same thing that we've done for the other ones. We're gonna do this API URL equals, and I'm just gonna grab it from here. Let's just paste the whole thing in. Copy that, paste there. Okay, so now we need to include this cart um, the same way that we've done the other JavaScripts. Um, let me just close out of some of these files that we don't need right now just to free up a little bit of space. Okay, so inside of our initialize.js, let's scroll back up to the top and we're going to we're just, just copy this and we're going to create a new call that goes to cart.js 
and then we're going to call this cart info. Okay, so now let's scroll down to where we actually have our user info and we're going to create another variable. We're going to call it cart info and it's going to equal to function and then inside of this function we're going to have the information kind of the same way that we have it up here. So let's do let uh, cart equals new cart and we need to if this cart is available or I'm sorry if the user is logged in display a cart if it's not then we're just going to display it as a zero so we already set our local storage information um, let's see where did we have it at last time so local storage information users we are storing them inside of the user item so we're going to just copy over this set item and then we're just going to change it to a get item so let's go back down and then over here we're going to do if local storage dot get item user is not equal to null and then we're going to run a function uh, right now we don't have any functions so we're just going to leave this as it is but what we wanted to do is eventually we're going to pass some information if the user is set if it's not then it's just going to display zero at the top and if you go on the page it'll just display um, generic information no products and stuff like that so let's switch back over to our cart js and then let's create a function called get cart so get cart and we're going to pass a user id which is going to be coming from the user information that we have stored inside of this javascript file so that user ID is going to be used if I switch back over to fake store API get user carts it's going to be at the end of this user so that's the ID that we want to grab and then parse the the carts that are available to that so let's uh, first do our Ajax call so we're going to do Ajax and this is going to be a type get and then the URL is going to be API URL um, actually let me create a variable for this so we're going to do var API URL equals this dot API URL okay so then I can just declare this out like that and then plus carts slash user slash uh, plus user ID okay and then finally if we have a successful um, connection we're going to do function data and then for right now let's just do console.log data okay so we're not using this function yet um, but basically if we go and look at this it's the API URL slash carts slash user slash the user ID which we need to fix that so it's not users it's user and then in order to actually uh, parse this information we need to call this function from our initialize.js function so in here we are declaring our cart here so uh, let's do uh, we got to pass our user information so we're going to do var user equals json dot parse and then we're going to parse that local storage dot user which is being stored in the the top uh, in a previous video we did that part so now we got cart and we're going to call that function get cart and then we're going to pass the user dot id and let's see what it produces so that should give us a um, some information in our console log so let's look at the console log API URL is not defined inside of cart.js so var API URL okay I just didn't do it right okay so we can see here we're grabbing two carts again not the best way to do it um, this would be something where you would be hitting a you know the most recent cart I would say this would probably be used if you have 
um, a way for them to store carts inside of your API that's coming across. Um, again, this is just kind of like for informational purposes, the code should work uh, regardless of what kind of API you're using as long as you're returning something. So as long as you can kind of get to this point, you'll kind of understand you know, what we're doing with it. But for right now, we have you know this cart that was this date, has these products in it, and then same thing here. So we're grabbing the two carts that we want. So now we need to go a little bit further with the data that we're collecting and actually um, parse it out so that we can use it as, um, we're gonna set it as a local storage item just like we did with our user in the previous video. So let's do a, uh, let's see, data, so data dot each, and then function, and we're gonna do index cart, so we're going to be passing this function um, and then we're going to be iterating through each one of these uh, records that we have for the data. Um, and then we're assigning an index and creating a separate cart item or a separate cart object. Um, so let's do um, cart.products because if we look at the, uh, the JSON that it was returning, so let me comment this out so we can see that. If we look at the JSON that it was returning, console.log data. Now, if we look at that over here, we have for each cart, we have a sub object called products. And then each one of those, we have this information product ID and how much that's uh, available of this, uh, the quantity for this product. So we have cart.products, and then we're gonna do another each loop in here because it is another object array. So we're gonna do our, an object. And then we're gonna do function index products, and then but basically kind of do the same thing. Let me close this so you can see the code a little bit better. So index products, and right now they're only supplying us with a product ID. So if we do like console.log and then products, we should get a return here that kind of gives us the product IDs that we're looking for. So product ID one, two, three, two, one, five. So now we have product ID and quantity of this one, and then it kind of goes down through that list. So what we want to do is now get information about that product, and in order to do that, we kind of have to do a um, an informational AJAX request based on the product ID. So let's go and take this away. And actually, I want to leave that. I want to take this one away because we're not done. we're done with that data part. But I want to be able to see what kind of product information we're working with here. Okay, so let's create a array. So let's do var single product equals array, and then we're going to again call an AJAX request. And this is gonna be type git. The URL is going to be API URL plus products slash, I believe it's products dot product ID, I think, yes, okay. Um, and I keep doing this part wrong, so URL, okay. And then, let's see, we wanna do a success, and on success, we're gonna be passing a single product, and for right now, let's just do console.log product, which should give us all the product information that we're looking for. There we go, so now it's producing all of that information that we're looking for here for each one of those products that's currently stored in the shopping cart. So now let's do something with this single product object array that we've created. Um, okay, so let's leave that commented in right now just so we can utilize the information that's displaying. And we're going to do single product, um, let's do the product ID first. And this is going to equal product.id. And I'm just gonna copy this over because we're gonna kind of go through and um, utilize a whole bunch of it because we want it to be where it displays the image, um, maybe a short description about it, it links to the page if we want to click on it and then go back to it. So there's gonna be a few different things that we produce here. So now let's pass the product 
URL, and then this is going to be, um, we need to pass slash product dot HTML, which is the page that we're currently using to display the products. And then I believe we're doing product ID equals for the actual URL to that product. All right, um, next we're going to do the title. So let's do single product title. And then this is going to be title. And then let's do one for price. So price. And then finally, let's do one for the image. And we're going to also store that image that's being sent over as well. And now we're going to do carts dot push. No, nope. uh, carts. Okay, stop correcting me. Carts dot push. And we're going to push the array single product into our existing carts. Actually, we don't have a URL for that yet. So let's do var carts equals an array. Uh, actually, we want to do it as an actual array instead of an object. Um, and that'll become clear in a minute because of the way that it's going to be dis uh, the way that's actually going to be stored uh, with the push. Um, so now we want to do a local storage dot set item, and we're going to be passing a cart, and then we're going to do JSON stringify, and then we're going to be passing that carts array that we just created. Okay, so now um, let's get rid of this and if we look at the application we now have our cart which contains all of the product information that we're wanting to pass so product ID 1 the title um, the image to it and everything okay so we have the information it's being stored how we want it to um, there's another thing I also want to store so I'm going to create a count so we're going to do var count equals zero and basically we're going to pass this to the header where it displays how many items are actually in the shopping cart itself so we have our count value established here so let's add in for each cart we're going to set up a count um, so let's do count plus equals cart dot product uh, let's see, uh, PRO products dot length. So that should give us the count of how many products are stored inside of that uh, specific cart. Um, let's see. So, and then after everything is said and done, we want to go down here at the end of our, so we want to get outside of the data dot each function. And then, um, yeah. So let's write right below. So we're still in the success. So if there's a success, success, if there is a success, it's going to change it from the zero that we established to actually display the count. So let's do local storage dot set item. We're going to do cart count, and then this is going to be count, and that's going to give us a count of six right now. So if we go to our code over here we want to update this so let's inspect and see what that is that's going to be bi cart nope uh, that's going to be nav link badge um, all right so let's create a class on that so let's go up to our templates we're going to go to our navigation and then on our cart we are going to add a class to it so let's see where's that at so this is the heart this is the cart so let's add in front of the badge let's do a cart count and let's remove the three from it right now okay so now we have it there's nothing there so whenever this loads we want it to display what's inside of that local storage item that we just set here so let's do um, we're going to do span dot cart count dot badge 
and then the HTML for it will equal to the count. And that's HTML. Okay, so now we have six showing inside of our uh, shopping cart at the top because that's what it's currently returning for the total count of all of the items. Um, so there is some other things that we need to look at uh, because like for example over here we have some products that have the same product ID so we need to make sure that it's counting those um, twice well I guess well, let's, we're gonna have to check and see what the quantity is and all that kind of stuff so but first let, we'll, we'll get back to that in a minute right now I just want to make sure that it was displaying and then we can also add the same class uh, so cart count we can add the same class to our cart, cart HTML where this badge is and then that should also give us a six where our shopping cart is okay so now this is all being kind of updated from inside of the API so now let's actually get it to display all of the information that is being stored as a um, item inside of our session for this browser okay so let's see what else um, I think that's all we need to get for that um, okay so let's create another function so get cart we're gonna create another function let's do get cart display and then we're going to pass the products to this display and then this display is going to be what controls this right here so for right now it's just displaying some generic dummy information so I'm gonna get it to actually display information from the the shopping cart um, so let's go to our cart HTML and let's find out what is controlling these. so we got product name all the way down to promo code so let's get rid of all of these because the only one that we want to have on there right now is let's just keep the first li item because we're going to use that as a basis um, and then let's also uh, let's just make this zero dollars for right now okay so what I want to do is I want to copy over this entire li and then we're going to paste that inside of our cart display for now just so we can use that inside of our function okay so we're going to be referencing that um, okay so we have this products that we're going to be passing to it uh, let's go ahead and pass it so inside of our initialize.js inside of the, this after the get cart user ID let's create a reference that goes to get cart display so first we're going to do if local storage dot get item and then this is going to be a cart count because we are passing that number so if this number is not equal to zero we want it to do something if it is equal to zero then it just won't display anything at all okay so let's do var cart items equals json dot parse and then we're gonna parse the local storage dot get item and then we're going to parse the local storage cart okay and then we're going to do cart dot uh, get uh, where was it get cart display and then we're going to pass cart items as our products okay so now inside of this we should be able to do console dot log products to see what we're working with here so now if we open up the console log we can see that we have six products and it's given us all the information that we're requesting from the API all right so so far so good so now let's take this function and actually create a dynamic list item based on um, these products that are being passed so we're going to do products dot each function and then we're going to create an index for an individual product and then inside of this we are going to uh, let's go ahead and create a variable for the total price because right now it's set at zero but we want it to be something better so let's do var price equals zero and then inside of here we want to do price plus equals product dot price so that way every time it iterates to this each loop it's going to add that product price and then it's going to display it eventually where we want it to go um, actually, let's go ahead and 
set that up now. So let's do, uh, what is the class on this? Um, there isn't one, so I believe that we can just change that to a, um, yeah, let's just change this to a span class equals, uh, let's just do a price. All right, so now we have this price, so we can come over here and do dot price dot HTML and then pass that price variable. So let's see how that looks. All right, so it's actually given us a total amount of something. Um, looks like it's got, why is it only doing four now? Uh, let's refresh this, six. Okay, so I'm assuming one of these things is fairly expensive. So $22, $109, $55, 109 $22. All right, so price looks like it's a little bit off to me, but we'll figure that out in just a second. Um, all right, so let's go back into this and actually do, um, I think for this list item, we can come in here and so let's do list group and inside of this list group, yeah, inside of this, let's just create another class and we're gonna call it cart display so that it matches our function. And then inside of our JavaScript, this is where we're going to add stuff to that cart display. All right, so we have cart display and then we're gonna do prepend and then we're going to pass a few things to this. Uh, basically, it's going to be this that gets passed. So let me go ahead and not here. We want to pass it here. All right. So JavaScript, you can't have it on multiple lines unless you break it up, which I'm not going to do right now. Uh, we're just going to keep it all in one line to kind of make it a little more simplified. I think uh, Visual Studio will go ahead and break it up for me once I get done adding everything that I need in here. All right, so the first thing is we're going to replace this product name with, um, I think it's product um, product title. I believe, yeah, that's what we called it. So product title. And then a brief description. Uh, I don't think we need a brief description. I don't think we've been gathering a brief description, so let's get rid of that. And then we got our price here, so let's do a price. So it's going to be product dot price, and then we're going to do two fixed and give it two decimal places, so it actually looks like a product. Um, product title, product price. Um, hmm. What is this error? Product price dot two fixed is not oh, capital. Okay, all right. So now you can see from the site, you know, we're getting the title and the price. Um, let's also add something else in here. So we have our H six. We want to have an H six. Yeah. Um, let's just add. Um, an image source and I think we can do I think we can do product dot image yep all right so that's working now we just got to make it better so let's do class image dash thumbnail and let's do style equals max width. Let's just make it 50 pixels so it's not terribly huge there. All right, um, and then I think I'm gonna take, oh wait, I definitely don't wanna have my H6. So let's take this div H6 and put it on the outside of our image. Okay, so let's see how that looks. That looks okay. I mean, it's a little squished. So let's come into our cart HTML and we're going to find this column MD5. Uh, let's do column MD6. 
and then we're just going to do column just a straight column here all right so six looks a little bit better um, yeah I think that's doable I mean we might be able to change it to maybe have this one five but I think it was at five it looked weird so let's try maybe do a five here and see what it looks like it doesn't look too bad um, I don't like the way it's kind of centering itself on some parts so it's using um, uh, the, the CSS for it. it's not exactly where I want it to be at um, so let's go over here open up our style sheet and then inside of our style sheet let's see let's just add a class for cart display so we got cart display and we have a div that's already wrapped around our uh, h6 tag so we're going to do div and let's just make the width of that 75 percent and the h6 let's do text align left let's see what that looks like oh i gotta watch my sass okay that looks a little bit better all right so now let's come in here and do for the image tag let's do a margin right and do one rem all right so that looks a little bit cleaner uh, it looks much better than it did um i still don't like how short it is so let's switch this back over to a six and yeah that works fine okay so now we have six here and as you can see here we have this book bag or this laptop bag or book bag backpack a lot of different names backpack backpack same thing um, this one's the same thing as this one so let's go in here and look in our cart JS and we're going to let's get rid of this but we want to do is add it to the top part where we're actually gathering the information so let's inspect this go to our console and inside of this cart let's do console dot log and cart okay so we got our products with a quantity next to them so wonder if we click on any of these we need to add that link as well because right now it's not going to go anywhere we want to do go to a link so we'll do that in just a second as well um, I need to see actually I need to do that now because I need to see what the price is so I think the product um, URL is what we're gonna add to it so let's do inside of this let's just encase the entire H uh, L I of it maybe we'll see uh, let's just wrap the whole L I and then we're going to pass the product dot product URL I believe so if we click on this now it's 23 2230 so that's the single price so it's not adding the price together and it's also not adding the quantity together okay and then this all right so now um, oh, also inside of our HTML we can go ahead and get rid of this additional product that was in there so now we have it displaying like that um, so what we need to do now is inside of our cart JS we need to combine this information and if it's quantity it'll actually pass over the quantity of this specific product as well so let's add um, so console log and now the cart. Um, let's do single product. Then let's do quantity equals products dot quantity uh, because we we're, we're not gathering a product quantity. We're gathering a products quantity as well as the uh, ID that we're getting for products so this if we look at our application now we should have the quantity for each so quantity six uh, 
four and two. Um, let's go to console just to verify that. So we have products four one six. Okay, so we're gathering the quantity that we need. So we can go ahead and remove that for now. And inside of this application, whenever we get back to actually displaying it here, I'm going to do a console dot log uh, product so I can see how we can kind of combine that information that's being sent over. Okay, so for each product, we have the product ID where these two match, these two match. So we need to get our product array here, and we actually need to push it out in a way that allows it to combine itself into one array and then just increment that product ID, which would give us our total price for um, this shirt for example so instead of being 2230 it'll be 2230 times whatever that quantity is for the sake of this video I'm going to simplify this a little bit um, so what I'm going to change is inside of our get cart I'm going to take this carts and I'm going to declare it here so it's only going to be gathering hopefully three products um, well, it's still not gathering three products. So, let's see. Yeah, let's do it right here, right above the count. And that should give us three products. There we go. All right, so now it's only displaying three products, which means essentially it's displaying it from the last shopping cart that's being pulled. Just because, again, this API, um, I should have chose a better API, but this API is displaying the data that it's given to us in a wonky kind of way. And it's displaying, you know, multiple carts, but we're not trying to hit one, you know, multiple carts. We're trying to hit one cart. So I think it'll be easier just to, for the example, uh, to be pulling just from one cart. So that way we can actually control the data a little bit better without having to do any kind of array merges or anything like that. Because it's kind of pointless because you won't be using it like that in real life. What you will be using it like in real life is this. Okay, so now let's... Um, Let's fix what we have up here for this six because it's still gathering the total amount of cart items from both carts. We want it to gather the total amount from this one cart. So we're going to also take our var count and we're going to move it and put it right above carts so that it only displays, should only display three. Um, so it's being added outside of this. We need to display it. Probably gonna have to move some of that data around, so it's still getting six. We want it to display just the just the three. So let's put it inside of here again, and then let's take this and move it inside of this data each as well. So we have here to here. So let's put it right here and count. It's not defined. Um, count zero. It's being declared here. I think we're going to have to rethink how we're doing our count. Um, so let's take this and we're going to remove it from the cart function and we're going to put it in our products function. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this and let's just save that. And then up here, let's do var count equals zero. Okay, so now we're getting that zero display. So now we need to get each individual products to basically add a quantity to what we're wanting to do here. Now, in turn, that broke it where it doesn't show any of our card information because if you remember, we have it set that if cart count equals zero to not display the, uh, the card itself. So if we come over to our initialize.js and we can remove this section for now just till we get it to work right. Um, but you can see it still displays the cart, it's just it's the cart count is zero. So let's fix it where the cart count is no longer zero if the cart products are available. Um, so we can remove count out of here because it's not needed. And then over here Let's figure out how we're going to move that down. So for each product, we want to 
do count product, and I believe it's QTY, which should give us, uh, it's a NAND value, oh, ATY, so let's do QTY, 16. All right, so we have 16 products. Um, so now if we come back to our initialize.js over here, should be able to set that back and then everything works the way it was supposed to. Okay, all right, so let's count and make sure this is right. So there's 16 products. So if we look at here, we have quantity of two plus four, so that's six plus 10, so that gives us 16. So our count is accurate based on the amount of products that we have now. Um, so we need to make these prices also reflect that um, new count. And we probably need to also throw in um, the cart quantity inside of the product information. Uh, so let's do, we got our product here, um, let me see what I want to do here. I want to do, let's do another H6, and then we'll do product QTY. Okay, so 10, 4, 2 gives us 16, and in the side of our styles, we can also do, let's just change this from margin right to margin zero for top and bottom and then one REM so watch that and that'll give us what we want here alright so now we have our quantity we have the image the title now we need to update the price so in order to update this price we're gonna have to take this product price here and multiply it by the quantity so we're gonna do um, uh, let's change this to uh, total um, total price, which we can update right here to total price, and then use that here as well. So we got our total price here, and then we're going to create a new variable, and it's going to be price. So var price equals, uh, let's do product dot qty times product dot price. Okay, so now we should be able to take this, and that's actually still displaying the price, so we need to have it just display the var price. Okay, so now let's verify how much these were. Um, and I'm going to do that by putting it underneath the title. So we have our title here. I'm going to do a span class. No, let's not do a span. Let's do a small. Small. And PHP is coming out product price. Okay, so 6 at 55.99. So let's do 6 times 55.99 gives us 335.94. So 335.94. All right. So now our price is reflected with the quantity to give us our total price for that item. Now, the total price needs to be add it because right now it's just the product prices so what we need to do is take this and not do it based on the product price but do it on the price that is currently being set which now we have the accurate amount of these three items together all right so that kind of puts us where we want to be with the shopping cart I mean it's not a functional shopping cart there are some other things that we can do uh, based on the API um, you can create new carts, which you wouldn't necessarily need to do in this tutorial. Um, but basically, um, I think that, that is the cart information. So let me just go through and see if there's anything else we need to add. So you know, let's first kind of clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit better. So let me expand out these. And I think in our other pages, we have like breadcrumbs. So let's add these breadcrumbs and let's go ahead and just do the cart here. 
So this goes right below the container fluid opening there. And we're going to do, um, let's say, your cart. And then we're going to label this with cart as well. Close that correctly. And then we can, um, I think we can keep that as it is. Let me see. I think there's a break tag. No. Um, also, let's get rid of this G5 just because I believe that was what was pushing it off to the left and the right to make it scroll. So we don't need to have any of that pad in the margin or, any, or the gutter around it. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to close out of this. And I'm going to stop watching it. All right. So stop watching that. And at the very bottom of this, I'm going to add a break tag so that button's not pushed up right up against it. Um, and then also inside of our cart itself, let's give it some labels. So let's get rid of this. And I'm just going to copy this li tag again, just because I'm using it now where it's displaying four different sections. So I want it to be able to have like a top part of it that's going to uh, add to it here. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit and uh, we're gonna have just we're gonna just put in the QTY so that it actually we're gonna have it we're gonna move it up or have it where the the rest of it gets appended afterwards. Um, but we don't have an image here, so we're just going to do. Uh, I don't need to have anything there. Um, and then let's do side of this H6. So let's keep the H6, and we're going to do. I don't know. Let's do title, I guess. And then we don't need to have this anymore. And then for this, let's do total price. So total price. All right. So, and let's not do title. Let's do product so we can group that whole section together. Probably be easier to do this with tables rather than trying to do bootstraps layout. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. So let's switch this over to a table format. So let's do table class table and it just make it easier to clean up so let's do t head and then we got a tr th and the first th is going to be quantity then our second one is going to be product our third one is going to be so th uh, total Product quantity total. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. All right, so now let's do T body. And inside of this, uh, let's do TR TD times one, two, three, four. So times four. And we're going to have to do this one, do a call, call span of two and then inside of this this is what we're going to copy over so now we can change this to also be cart display and then inside of our cart JS let's change this where it's not LIs it's going to kind of mimic this structure now so first thing we need to do is inside of this, let's do a TR, and then H6, I don't think we need any of this right now either. So this is going to be the first TD, then we're going to end that TD there, and then let's do our next TD, which is going to be the next image, then we're going to close that out. Instead of a div, we're going to close that and then do another TD. 
which is going to be our title, H6, with the small price. And then we're going to close that out for that TD. Then we're going to do TD. And we can keep the span class text muted for that. And we remove that last LI, which is a little broken. So <laughs> let's figure out what we did wrong here. Um, all right, so let me get rid of, let me just add in, oh, okay, I see what I did. It's just not being populated there. So uh, cart display T body. All right, so that's a little bit better. And then let's do a T foot to make it where it has a total USD and then the price. So we're gonna do TR. TD, and this is going to be a whole span of three, and it's going to be total USD. Then TD is going to contain this strong tag. All right, so let's get rid of this and see what that leaves us with. All right, so it's clearing up a little bit, so we got to figure out what is um, with this. Uh, I don't think we need any of any of this anymore. Let's get rid of all of this for now. So let's see what's going wrong with our table here. So we got our T body, and we got the TR. So let's do. Actually, I don't think we can do a link inside of that the way we're, or outside of it the way we're trying to do it all right there we go so what we can do is have that image link so let's take that link that we did have and we put that around the image instead of around the entire row so that's where they can click to go to that product so if we click it goes to that product all right so that's good all right so now it's a little bit cleaner than it was um, mostly all right what's going on here Let's see we have column span of two and inside of the T body we have the TD the image why is the image why is there um, oh, that's because I gotta wash my sass. So that should fix that. There we go. All right, so let's stop that. Um, so now it lines up with where it needs to. The price lines up. Let's do a right align on the price. And I think that's, we can probably call that done. Uh, so let's do TD class equals text right and we're going to add this same class to this and inside of this we're going to have this price class text right I'm assuming bootstrap 5 does not use text right so let's see what they do use so let's go back and let's go to our docs and look for text right and see what it's been replaced with. So text start and text end, I want to say, is what. So let's find text right has been changed to text end. So we don't need text right, we need text end. There we go. All right, so did not know that. Um, good to know though. So text end makes a little bit more sense than the text right did. All right, so now we got that lined up. Everything looks good here. Um, yep. So I think that's um, pretty much how you would pull a card in. So I th uh, let's see. I think we have it set up that it won't display if the user's logged in or logged out. So if we hit log out. It takes away the cart. So if we click on cart, there's nothing there. Um, which is what we want. So now if we log back in and we go to the cart, there's nothing for this user account. Um, 
There should be. I think we were using that user account, so let's see what's what it's pulling over. Application cart count. So it's gathering cart, but it's not updating the cart count. So let's see what we what what's going wrong with that cart count. Um, cart count count equals product quantity, which should be there. Count zero. So if I change this to ten, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, so something is wrong here. What is wrong here? Um, if we click on here, um, so obviously we can't use cart count anymore in order to get the cart count. So we're going to take this and we're just going to get it outside of this if statement because having it inside the if statement is uh, basically it's not allowing it to run. And the way it was set up that if the cart count was zero, to not run and show the cart, not to do any of these functions, but the cart count is actually getting set inside of this get cart display, so we can't have it search for to see if it's set before setting it. So by removing that, that should um, help us out here. So now if we log out and we log in, it's showing a zero up here, uh, which we are currently getting the cart, but we're not getting the cart count. Um, what happens if we refresh? If we refresh, the cart count is being set. Uh, let's try that again. So if we hit login, oh, cart count is being set before the cart is being set. So what we need to do is create like a wait for it. And to do that, we are going to add something right after the cart. We're going to set a timeout. So set timeout and we're going to set this timeout, let's say, to like 2,000 milliseconds. And then we're going to take this and we're going to paste it into that set timeout and see if that helps. Um, so let's log out and log in and see how long it takes to populate this. So it takes a few seconds. I mean, obviously, it takes two seconds. So let's decrease it down to, let's say, like 500. I'm just trying to make sure that it connects with that after the cart is being established because it's having to hit that API. All right, so that's too early. So let's set it to one second. Uh, log out, log back in. All right, so that one seems to accurately get it. Um, okay, I think I can live with that. Probably not the most elegant solution here. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. I know this one was a bit long. You ran into some issues, but hopefully you hung out and stuck through so we can get the finished product, uh, the finished version of it. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, which I'm sure some of you might, uh, hit me up in the comments below. If you like the video, I'm actually kind of uh, frustrated with it right now. But if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know why, and I can change it. Uh, just kind of bear with me. This API is not as robust as I had initially hoped it was when I started the project. So, um, yeah, that'll do it for this tutorial. And I appreciate you watching, and I will talk to you later.